In this lecture, I'm going to go over the concept of face, which you will need to know in order to better understand the later sections of this course. So, what is face, and how do we define it in English? Well, defining a culturally rich and binary term like face, accurately, is extremely difficult as the expression is closely glued to relevant cultural experiences which will be hard to fathom in English conceptually. So I will do my best to provide you guys the closest linguistic equivalence of face in English. So to explain the concept of face, we need to break it down into two components. Face refers to the importance of maintaining, protecting and positively carrying and presenting your own image, reputation and dignity. Face also refers to the importance of maintaining, protecting and respecting someone else's image, reputation and dignity. In Chinese, the word face is rarely used on its own. It's usually used in specific collocations. For those of you who don't know what a collocation is, they're groupings of words that usually appear together and convey meanings by association. So in this lecture, I will share with you the Mandarin Chinese collocations where the term face is most commonly used. At the end of this, you will not only begin to understand how Chinese people use the word face, but also the actions and practices associated with the term to offer you some insight into what this term really means in context. So I will offer you five expressions in the form of Mandarin Chinese collocations, which demonstrates how the idea of face is conceptualized and expressed in Chinese. In order to allow you to truly understand what face means, I will explain this section in English, but supported with Mandarin Chinese translations, so that it would contextually make more sense. So number one, 给面子, or 白面 in Cantonese. This translates to give someone face, or to gain face in English. Now, if you're with someone who's your senior at work, you should give face and show respect to them. Number two. 不给面子, which means to not give someone face. So if you re refuse a drink from your Chinese client without a good reason, you fail to give face. Number three. 要给面子, which means the need necessity or obligation to give or provide face to someone someone else. So for example, if your Chinese manager offers you a drink at a Chinese banquet, you should accept this offer because there's an obligation to give him face. Number four, 要面子, which means to protect or seek to protect or to save face. If you confront your colleague for his mistakes, he might deny his wrongdoings because he wants to protect or save face. This reflects Chinese people's underlying desire to be perceived positively in the eyes of the others. Number five, 没面子, which means having no face, in the sense that your actions has caused you, your self-image, your self-dignity and self-reputation to be undesirable. So if you're completely intoxicated in public like this guy over here, or if you go into a meeting in this particular state, you're considered to have no face. So that's the five most common examples of how face or mianzi is used in Mandarin Chinese. I've also attached a PDF in the resource section with illustrations and visualizations like these to help you better capture the concept of face. So feel free to use it for your own learning. See you guys next time.